Okay, everyone, welcome to the uh, Algebra 1 Quarter 1 Test Review. We're going to jump right into it. So, these first couple, it's important for you to read the instructions. So, on the first four, it's not asking you to solve. I know we see variables and we're like, but there's no equal sign. It's just asking you to, to evaluate. So, all you're going to do on all these problems is they're going to give you x and y, and you're just going to plug them into the equation. So for number one, this would be 2 times the cube root of 64 minus the square root of 49. And if we do that, the cube root of 64, which I guess I should show you how to do in the calculator, because I think that's the thing we struggle with on this problem, is here. Where's my calculator? There it is. Um, and so cube root is if you go to math, you'll see it right there, cube root. And so we would go the cube root of 64 is 4. So this is really 2 times 4 minus 7, which is 8 minus 7. So the answer is... One. Same thing for number two. We're just plugging in. So this is six times six minus three times negative four squared over six times negative four. Now, once again, the key mistake we make here on this is we forget when we plug in. When we plug in, all right, go away. Negative four squared. Remember, when you type in it, something that you're going to square, always put in parentheses. And so this is going to be, if we zoom in, this will be 36 minus. Forty-eight over negative twenty-four, which will end up being positive one half if you reduce it in your calculator. For number three, so once again, this is four times the cube root of one twenty-five minus the square root of forty-nine. So this is four times five minus seven, or thir twenty minus seven, which is thirteen. Number four is four times two minus two times negative three squared over two times negative three. Which is eight minus 18 over negative six. Which, if we double check, is... If we simplify that all the way down, it's 5 thirds. And I just want to show you, um, if you wanted to do that on the calculator, what you would do is, let me just get this all running right here, is you would go, uh, if you do alpha F1, you can bring up the calculator, and you can type stuff in exactly as it looks. So you could do 8 minus 18 over negative 6, and there's your 5 thirds. That was alpha F1, and then the fraction to bring up the fraction menu. All right, let's keep moving forward. So what step justifies the work between step 1 and step 2? So what change, oops, sorry, what change between here and here? And what they did is they flipped the stuff from side to side. And so that's if A equals B, then B equals A. And that's the symmetric property of equality. Which property identifies the step? Uh-oh. 
what happened? I got a little problem here in my thing. Hold on, let me pause and fix that. All right, there we go, fix it. So what is the, justifies this, the work from given step one? So from here to here. And what they did is, they said six minus four is two. Um, not crazy about this problem. Um, but what we're talking about here is the associative property of addition. If they group this and they change that to six plus negative four and they simplified it. Um, I think the question on the SOL will be much clearer than that. We'd see something a lot more like number seven. Which property justifies the work from step two to step three? And there they clearly use the distributive property. Go back to full screen. All right, next problem. Write an algebraic expression or equation that represents each statement. A number tripled less than the same number. I think there should be an is in there. I think that's a typo. Let's see if the teachers fix that. A tripled number is less than the same number squared. So the tripled number, that's three times the number, is less than the same number squared. Remember, this is tripled, this is doubled. This is squared. And this is cubed. Or also to the third power. Twelve less than the cube root of the quotient in x and y. So there is no is, there's no verb in the sentence, so it's a sentence fragment, which means that we're going to have an expression. So the cube root of the quotient of x and y. Quotient means divide. I hope I could spell. Um, divide but we need to do 12 less than that. So it's important that this 12 cannot be underneath the radical. So remember, cube root, square root are those symbols. All right. What is the value of x that will make the following statement true? So now our instructions are to solve. So I multiply both sides by 2, and the 2's cancel, and I'll get 3x plus 1 equals 16. Then I subtract 1 from both sides, and I'll get 3x equals 15. And I would divide both sides by 3, and I'll get x equals 5. So let's do our double check here. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16, divided by 2 is 8. And that's good. All right, remember, if you haven't seen the double check, we just plug, we want to plug x, 5, back in for x in the original problem. 3 times 5 plus 1 divided by 2 has to equal 8. And it does, so we're all good. I'm sorry, 10 stuck there. For number 11, we need to solve this. So, remember, when we want a problem like this, there's a lot going on. Sometimes it's useful to throw in a dotted line. And here we'll make a pretty dotted line. Um, so that we remember when we talk about sides of an equation, what we're talking about. So a common mistake is people will do 3x and 3x. But that is wrong because we're not adding 3x to each side of the equation. We're doing it. We're adding 6x to one side and nothing to the other. So first up, I'm going to combine like terms. And I'll get negative x minus 7. And on the other side, I'll distribute the negative, and I'll get 6 minus x minus 3. Um, and here I'm going to combine like terms again. 6 minus uh, 3 is positive 3. So combining like terms again. Now, what we'll see, though, is we have a problem. 
because if I add x to both sides, I get negative 7 equals 3. And so what I have here is an untrue statement. So this is no solution. If I had wound up with a true statement here at the end, something akin to 5 equals 5, then that would be a true statement and there'd be infinite solution. All right. Next set of problems. So more of the same. Here, I know we're going to freak out. There's a fraction here. We've got to go running for the hills. We're so scared of fractions, but we'll be okay. So we want to get x by itself. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides, and I'll get 1 third x, negative 5 plus 5 cancels out to be 0, equals 2. Now, if it, we divide by the number in front of x, which we call the coefficient, but you have to remember that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And all that cancels, and I'll get x equals 6. All right, for this one, I have to distribute 6x plus 90 minus 12x equals negative 12x plus 36, because we're distributing a negative 12. Then I'm going to combine like terms on this side, and I'll get negative 6x plus 90 equals negative 12x plus 36. I need to get all the x's on the same side, so I'm going to add 12x to both sides. And I'll get 6x plus 90 equals 36. I'll subtract 90 from both sides. And I'll get 6x equals negative 54. Divide both sides by 6. And I'll get x equals negative 9. Remember, on the SOL or test, you should always go back and double check your work and plug these back in. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate how to double check on the calculator. So what you would do on an equation like this is you would type the left side of the equation, but anytime we saw an x, we would just type in our solution. So this is going to be 6 times negative 9 plus 15 minus 12 times negative 9, and that's the left side of the equation. The right side of the equation is negative 12 times negative 9 minus 3. And if the two sides of the equation come out the same, 144 equals 144, so that solution is correct. Solve the equation below for B. So. We want to get B by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract X from both sides. And I'll get R minus X, because I can't combine those, they're not like terms, equals 3BX. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3X. And I'll get that cancel. I'll get b equals r minus x over 3x. Now it's solved for b. Um, wait, that's over there. That's my bad thing. Um, for number 15. It is 5 ninths f minus 32 equals 32. 32 degrees Celsius outside Neverland. So I'm going to plug 32 in for C. I'm going to solve this for 9. Now I can either distribute here, or I can multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is what I am going to choose to do. That cancels, and I'll get F minus 32 equals... Fifty-seven point six. Add thirty-two to both sides, and I'll get F equals eighty-nine point six. It's a very pleasant, maybe a little bit warm, 
We have to turn on the air conditioning in Neverland. All right, solve the equation below for y. I'm going to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and I'll get 4y equals negative 2x plus 16. Just as a reference, you could have written that as 4y equals 16 minus 2x. But as you will learn in the next unit, it's very useful to put the variable first and the constant second. Now I still got 4y, so I need to divide both sides by 4. And I'll get y equals negative 2x over 4 plus 16 over 4, or y equals negative 1 half x plus 4. This next one's much easier. I subtract 5x from both sides, and I'll get negative y equals negative 5x plus 16. And I divide both sides by negative, well, I don't know what happened there with my writing. Divide both sides by negative 1, and I'll get y equals 5x minus 16. All right. Keep moving. we got a lot to do here. Alvin's backyard is in the shape of a trapezoid with the dimensions below. If the perimeter of this backyard is 1,211 feet, what is the value of x? The key here is that you need to know what the word perimeter means. Perimeter means to add up all the sides. So I would add x plus 8 plus x plus 65 plus x plus 8 plus x plus 132, and that's all going to add up to 1,211. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to get a little fancy here. Uh-oh, what happened there? All right, pause while I undo a few things. Let me fix that. And we're back. Um... And so I would add these up. So x plus x plus x plus x is 4x plus, and then we have to add up the other like terms, 865, 8, and 132, which is 270, and that's going to equal 1,211. So I will subtract 270 from both sides. And I'll get 4x equals 941. And we'll divide both sides by 4. And I'll get x equals 235.25 feet. Let me just double check my work. All right, this is why you always double check your work, is I did make a mistake. If you were following along at home, is I made a math error right here. These, those numbers add up to 213. I must have had a typo on my calculator, and I typed it earlier. So I would subtract 213 from both sides, and I'd get 4x equals... 998, and I divide both sides by 4, and I get x equals 249.5 feet. Now I'm going to double check my work again to make sure it works. All right, that's much better. Now, Pauline sells flower arrangements. She sell, sells $7 for each bouquet. That's how you say that word, bouquet plus two dollars per flower. If one basket or bouquet sells for $29, how many flowers are in the bouquet? So this is going to be seven plus two dollars for every flower is going to equal 29. So we would subtract seven dollars from both sides. We get 2f equals 22. Um, and we divide both sides 
by 2, and we get 11 flowers are in the bouquet. All right, solve the graph and solve and graph the inequality below. So I'm going to redo this down here where I have a little bit more space. I would subtract 4 from both sides, and I get negative 6x is greater than or equal to 24. Now, next up, I would divide both sides by negative 6. But when you divide both sides by negative 6, you flip. If you multiply or divide both sides of inequality by a negative, you end up flipping it. So you get x is less than or equal to negative 4. So I'll just call this 0, negative 1, negative 4. So close circle at negative 4. x is smaller than negative 4. So we would graph like that. Number 20 is solve the inequality for y. So this is just like the problems we were doing before. But, once again, when we divide both sides by negative 5, that should have been a 10, sorry. Sloppy handwriting. Is that the inequality flips. And I'll get y is less than or equal to 2 fifths x plus 2. Identify all solutions to the following inequality. So first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2. And I'll get 5. 4 minus 5x is less than or equal to 28. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And I'll get negative 5x. Oh, sorry for the interruption. Joy is a recording after school. It is 32. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. Once again, dividing by a negative, so I flip the inequality. And I'll get x is greater than negative 6.4. So, numbers that are greater than negative 6.4 are negative 2, 0, and 2. Alright, circle the ordered pairs that lie on the graph of the given equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in these values, each one of these values, into x and y and see which ones make the statement true. And that's one way you could go. The other way you could go, if you're smart with your calculator, so let me do that. Let me show you that way first, before I show you the calculator way. So what this is saying is 3 equals negative 1 fourth times negative 4 plus 2, which is 3 equals 1 plus 2. So that lies on the graph because it makes the statement true. Um, the second point is negative 8 comma 4. So 4 equals negative 1 fourth times negative 8 plus 2. And that's going to be 4 equals 2 plus 2. So that one is on the graph. The third point is 3 equals 1 fourth, 4 plus 1, sorry, plus 2. It's negative 1 fourth, sorry. So that will be 3 equals negative 1 plus 2, which is 3 equals negative, positive 1. Sorry, this is in the way. Equals 1. Well, that's not a true statement, so this point is not on the graph. And you could do that to the other two points, but I'll, on the other two, I will show you how to use the calculator to do it, which is we put the equation in the calculator. Y equals negative. 
one fourth. plus 2. And I go to the table of values. And I can check each individual point and see if it's correct. So negative 4, 3, yep. Negative 8, 4, yep. 4 should go with 1, so that one's not right. 0, 2 is there. And we go to 8 is 0. So this one is there, but that one is not. All right, circle the relations below that are functions. Remember that functions, for every x, there's only one y. So if I look at this x value, there's nothing above or below it, so that is a function. This one, if we draw a vertical line, intersects more than twice, so that is not a function. On this one, x has two y's, so that's not a function. On this one, 6, which is 1x, has two different y's, so that's not a function. And on this one, we get 2, 4, 3, 5, negative 2. That one's a function. No x value has more than one y. All right. The function below represents the amount of money in dollars Mr. Kimball earns for working, working X hours. How much does Mr. Kimball earn for working 40 hours? So that's going to be F of 40, which means I just plug in $40 for X. And that's going to be 2. Mr. Kimball has a decent hourly wage. He's making $38 an hour. And so Mr. Kimball makes $1,540 for working 40 hours a week. Which equation is satisfied by all the points on the table below? So now we're going to have to do what we did before, um, which is plug this x and this y into the point. We're going to have to do it four times for each one. So what we want to start with, though, is a point that's easy to plug in. I'm going to start with this point. So if I do 3 times 0 minus 7, I can do that in my head real quick. That does not equal negative 15, so that's not correct. This one is 5 times 0 minus 7. This has to equal 20. That's not true, so that's not correct. This one is 6 times 0. One of these should all be. 6 times 0 plus 3 times 7 has to equal 15. I'm sorry, I screwed this one up. It should be 5 times 7. Um, either way, it's not true. This is not true. 0 plus 21. This is 21 equals 15. Not true. And the last one is 3 times 0 plus 3 times 7 equals 21, which is 21 equals 21. So just by picking the one point, this point didn't work in any one of these three. The reason I picked this point is if they give you a point that has 0 or 1, those are always easy ones to start with because multiplying by 0 or adding by 0 is fairly easy. All right, let's keep going. Find the range of the function for the given domain. So they're giving you the domain. Remember, domain are the x values. So they're just saying plug this, this, and this in for x. So this is, we do negative 2 times negative 3 plus 3, which is negative 6 plus 3, which is negative 3. Then we do the exact same thing, but with 0, which is 3. And then we do the exact same thing. Oh, whoops, I made a mistake. Why didn't you guys catch my mistake? That's positive 6. So that's 9. Come on, guys. you got to keep me on my toes. Um, 
So this is going to be negative 2 times 2 plus 3, which is negative 4 plus, I don't know if I wrote down the numbers that the problem had, is negative 1. So my range is negative 1, 3, 9. Remember to write your points in order from least to greatest. Um, so for this one, we're doing the same thing. Negative, negative 3 plus 10 is 13. Negative 0 plus 10 is 10. And negative 2 plus 10 is 8. So my range is... My range is 8, 10, 13. For the last one, f of negative 3 equals... Lastly, f of 2 equals. And so here, on this one, my range is negative 13, negative 1, 7. All right, list the domain and range of each of these following relations. So the domain are all the x values, 2, 4, 3, 5, negative 2. So negative 2. 2, 3, 4, 5. The hardest part of that was putting them in order. The range is negative 2, 3, 4, 5. For this next one, the domain is negative 4, 4, 5, 6. And then the range is negative 1, 2, 5, 6. I've already shown just a second, a few seconds ago, how to do this. But f of 4 just means I plug 4 into f here. So this will be equals 4 cubed minus 2 times 4 plus 5, which is 64 minus 8 plus 5, which is... For f of negative 3, this would be negative 3 cubed minus 2 times negative 3 plus 5, which is negative 27 plus 6 plus 5. So f of negative 3 equals negative 16. Here, this is saying g, so I'll plug that into that function. So this is negative, negative 1 squared minus 7, which is negative 8. And then this one is negative 5 squared minus 7, which is negative 25 minus 7, which is negative 32. Two more. So, sorry. For this problem, make a table, represent the function, use your table to graph the function. So I'm just going to pick some points, negative 2, 0, and 4. I plug in negative 2. 
I get zero. If I plug in zero, I get one. If I plug in four, I get three. So my points are there, there, and there. And sure enough, sorry, I'm gonna drop out so I can draw a pretty line. There's my line. So the domain, depending on how your teacher's how did you write it, is negative infinity to infinity or all real numbers. And the range is negative infinity to infinity. And once again, all real numbers. And some of your teachers may have shown set builder notation. And to write that in set builder notation, you would write it this way, which is x such that the x is this is the domain, and this is the range. And this would not be on the test, so if you see this, don't freak out. This is basically saying this crazy script R, if you haven't ever seen it before is the set of all real numbers. All right. Last problem. Once again, I'm going to pick some points. Um, and if I do this, I will get negative 3, negative 2, and 0. So negative 3, 3, negative 0, negative 2, and 6, 0. And if I go back here and draw my line, I get a nice pretty line like this. The domain arranged for this, ah, oops, sorry. The domain range for this linear function are the exact same as this problem. All real numbers. This is a linear function. It goes up forever, it goes down forever, it goes left forever, and it goes right forever. All right, so that's it. Um, good luck on the test. If you have any questions about anything I explain, bring it to your teacher before you start the exam. Good luck on your quarter test.